Hey everybody, welcome to the show. It's just bodybuilding. Of course, myself, Big Round Parlor. We got Dusty Hanshaw, the producer Scott McNally, and we got a guest today, Beef Stew, Stew Sutherland. How you doing, man? It's good to have you on the show. It's good to finally meet you. I know you uh you know the other guys. Um, so yeah. How's it going, buddy? Uh good. Thank you for having me. I'm I'm glad we're doing this because I was just telling Scott earlier, I'm just killing time right now. I <laughs> You know, it's it's like walking through molasses the last few days before a show. All the all the work is done. You're just like, let's get this shit over with, and um, yeah. you know, I'm just trying to get it over with right now. So, as, as Dusty calls it, the slow walk through hell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you've been doing the media tour. I see you've uh, you were yeah. on uh, Who Ad Show. And then uh, you were on, what was he on? Was it Coach's Corner or Blood, Sweat, and Gear? What, which yeah, one did you have Yeah, just on Scott? Blood, Sweat, and Gear. We're doing like kind of like a little mini series of guys that are the, you know? the new competitors, the new guys that are all doing New York. Because yeah. there's a bunch of them this year. So we just did that. I saw you were on yeah. uh, Muscular Development, I think, a few weeks back. Is that, is yeah, that, I talked yeah. to Ron Harris uh, last week. Okay, um, yeah, last week. Most- uh, do, you, if, do you know desktop bodybuilding, that Australian yeah. guy? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah. Yeah, I, I just I just did an interview with him too. He's he's a you're, I like his channel. He's you're on like like when a new movie comes out and the star has to go hit all the talk shows. He, you know? <laughs> yeah, he, he does the popular, he does the late nights, he hits Letterman and Leno, but then he's also got to do some of the morning shows that no one gives a shit about. He, he gets in there, guys like is that, that, is that what this is? <laughs> yes, this is the morning show. This is the 8 a.m. show. Uh, good morning, just like soccer America. moms watching. No one knows who you are. Yeah. <laughs> Tell us about bodybuilding. What do you do with that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> What's about the weightlifting? Yeah. No, no, man. It's uh, it's good to have you. And and you know, like Scott said, you're you're one of the kind of one of the new guys. You know, I even did a Chat GPT search on you. Holy crap. And uh, you're, you're new yes. enough that ChatGPT, actually, ChatGPT said something funny to me today. It said, my cutoff is September of 2021, so I do not know who Beef Stew is. Oh, so wow. I was, I was like, irrelevant oh. before that date. Okay. Yeah, you didn't exist. <laughs> you weren't even training. You weren't even you training. You didn't exist. I still feel pretty irrelevant, but I mean, <laughs> <laughs> do you talk that to robots be changing a lot, this weekend. <laughs> I find they're sort of the best type of friend for a guy like me, you know? Yeah. <laughs> they're there we'll for me. Back, so. <laughs> yes. So, um, yeah, it's good to have you. I also have to say, um, you, you had so you said something on Fuad's show that cracked up my training partner and I. We were both laughing about it, and we've, we've been saying it to each other in the gym for the last, like, week and a half. But... Uh, when when someone asked you about how Justin Shire trains and you said, I don't have enough time in the day to train like Justin Shire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm not quite Dusty Hanshaw back training. I'm not quite Justin Shire back training. I'm like somewhere in the middle. Uh, That's where everyone should be. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like, yeah. It's so satisfying watching him train. You know, it's like, just perfect. It's like that's what you should be doing, but I, I, I don't know. I'm not that patient. Like I, said. <laughs> I, I know, I know. Dusty has an attention deficit issue, so he can only do yes. like one to two working sets per exercise, and he's got to move on. And I, I imagine yep. Justin's style of training with those like really long sets and all the slow negatives and stuff. So it feels like you're watching a two minute set of you know hammer machine press. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, more power to him. Obviously, it's working for him. I'm, dude, I'm bummed. He was he was originally planning on doing New York. Yeah, um, and mm-hmm. you know the two of us are both from Oregon. Um, well, I'm from Washington originally, but Northwest guys. There's not a lot of us, and you know I wanted to I wanted to get out there with him. So yeah, I, yeah, know, I was maybe, hoping so too, we'll, man. We'll run into each other eventually. He's not going to get away forever. <laughs> <laughs> so so what's give that, people, what's he you know, you know, you, yeah. What's that, Dusty? I said, what did, what is, what did Justin just change shows or push it later on in the year? I don't know what he did. Yeah, he's, he's doing Chicago now. Chicago and oh. maybe Tampa as well. Um, okay. But yeah, just, just a couple months later. He had like a real busy like end of his year last year. You know, life mm-hmm. stuff kind of happens, you know, gets in the way of shit. Lots yeah. of marijuana um, farming. Lots of marijuana farming going on. It's going to pick itself, man. I had... <laughs> 
I had asked him about it back at the Arnold and he had said even back then, he was like, yeah, I think I'm going to do something a little later because I was already trying to line something up for the New York Pro Series we were doing. And he was like, yeah, I don't think I'm going to make it. And he was just huge as a house. Like you could tell, you know, like I'm not going to say fat and happy, but round and happy. You know what I mean? Like he yeah. was in that awesome <laughs> off-season bodybuilding phase where you know you're just stretching your T-shirts full to the max. Blown. Yeah. Yeah, 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 full yeah, blown, yeah. exactly. He came down, <laughs> yeah, he yeah. Came down to actually the muscle factory when he was kind of like that big yeah and i saw him i was like fuck dude i've never seen i'd never seen him that big before yeah you know he was like front to back just taking up the space and you know he's not like a crazy heavy guy either he's like about my height i think he probably got up to like 270 275 the highest and I, you know i was right. 20 pounds above that right so it just goes to show how much you know how well he's put together to look at that big at that kind of weight you know yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. So did you guys compete against each other uh back on the on the in the northwest? Uh n- so we we did one show his first season ever. Uh this guy just he just popped up out of nowhere. Everyone was like, who the f- is this guy? You know. In yeah. twenty nineteen I did the Emerald Cup and I was in the heavyweights, he was in the light heavies. I think he got like third. Um, you know, it was like his second show or something. Um <laughs> yeah. he, he, I think he'd been on anabolics you know bikini cycle for all of like two months at that point he was already like about to win the light heavies you know um so you know everybody saw him there and like the writing was on the wall and they did the usa the next year it was a little off there uh and then he did you know nationals and won that um in the heavy yeah yeah okay um, we 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 got to remember to jump in here scott and we got to do the like share subscribe yes comment and ring the bell Ring the bell. Good job, you got, you got to swing it, Stu. You got to do it. You know, I didn't, I didn't even believe that he knew who we were, but he knew the ring the bell. So that 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 convinced <laughs> That's the I'm only thing we're known for. Forever. Forever. <laughs> That's amazing. That's amazing. And obviously, thanks to Mutant for sponsoring the show. Dusty20, Bigron20, imutant.com. There you go. Um I wanted to say, you know, we were saying how you're one of the new guys and all that. So you got to give our listeners – you know, kind of the 30 second elevator pitch on, on, uh, you know, your, your, uh, entry to bodybuilding you know, where did you, where did you come from? You know what I mean? Mm, God, you know, I play, I used to play lacrosse back in high school, which is kind of like a rich kid sport, just like dusty, uh, with hockey. But, um, I kind of like, you know, as I got, you know, into like soft sophomore, junior year, I wasn't really that into it anymore. Um, I never had like a passion for it the way that I do for lifting weights and training and stuff. So I eventually like, you know, like a lot of kids, I took a weightlifting class in high school and I kind of got hooked. I got more into it in college. Um, and then I was a cheerleader for a little bit. And then one of my buddies on the team was like, Hey, you should do a show. Cause he'd done men's physique shows. And then that was 2017. I did the Emerald cup for the first time in 17 and then you know just snowballed from there and uh haven't looked back and um yeah so i mean i just i i got i got a lot of energy like a lot of kids like a lot of guys and i i needed somewhere to to put it once i finished up playing sports um and you know similar i mean just like bodybuilding you don't make much money off of uh lacrosse if you go pro, right. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> I keep on picking the wrong sports, I guess, but yeah. So, yeah. you know, like I said, just kind of snowballed from here. I've been, uh, I think my first show was like a buck 80. I did classic. No kidding. Was, yeah. That, that was six years ago now. Uh, I was 20 years old. So, um, and I think I'm going to be like two fifty two ish on stage this year, something like that. Oh, so yeah. Nice. So you mentioned what you, you were USA's? cheerleading. What did you I was like two forty six last year. Nice, that's a good jump. You, you, that's a real is. solid jump. Yeah, you you mentioned you were cheerleading. I got to ask you about that. I think you're. Yeah. Well, well, how was that? You know, I know like up here in Canada, cheerleading is not that big of a thing. But I know down at the universities and colleges and high schools down there, it's it's its own sport. It's massive you know event and all sorts of amazing athletes are getting into that what was what was that like for you give us the the rundown i'm very curious 
And also well, so I got a follow was, up to uh, that. The follow up question will be, and how is the yeah. dating scene with cheerleaders when you're the I only straight there. guy on the team? There. Okay. Okay. <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. I didn't want to be obvious about we, my, we my call, actual we question. Call that, we call that cheer cest when, uh, when you're dating on the team, but we'll get there. Um, so yeah, I was, I was, you know, like a lot of kids when I got to college, I was just kind of like drinking a bunch, lifting weights and, uh, partying. And I got that out of my system pretty quick. Cause I was just I'm, like a lot of people in the sport, I'm kind of an extremist. So like if I'm, if I'm partying, it's like everything under the sun no holds barred right. and that's not sustainable. Yeah. Um, you know, I was fucking going to engineering school. I couldn't, I couldn't keep that up. So I got more and more into lifting weights. Uh, and then, like I said, one of my, I, I was, I was in a fraternity at the time actually. And we were going to like functions and stuff with, you know, sororities and whatever. And a lot of the girls, uh, there's a lot of reject, reject cheerleaders are in sororities. <laughs> and they were like, Hey, you're, right. you're pretty strong. You should like, try out for the team. Um, so I was like, what the fuck? Why not? You know, it sounds like fun. Um, and lo and behold, I got on the team and like, honestly, it was so fun, like going to the games and stuff. Cause I, I would have my friends in the stand, like my, my fraternity brothers, you know, jeering and you know, speed <laughs> dogs and stuff. And <laughs> it, it was a lot of fun. I mean, back then I was like, I had zero social skills. I have slightly above zero now, but like, <laughs> you know, so you, you ask about dating cheerleaders, not for me, but yeah, it did happen. You know, uh, there, I don't think there was actually a single gay dude on the whole team. Huh. I mean, that's All the right. perception. Right. But like, yeah. no, it's, it's a pretty good gig, you know, <laughs> you get to <laughs> throw girls around and like hold them up by their, you know, it's fun. Thanks. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. I did the same but, thing, but know, I wasn't after, in college. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And there yeah. was no team. <laughs> um. <laughs> did you pay to do it? It was, it, was, it was more frowned upon when Dusty was doing it. Yeah. Um, it was a little bit <laughs> different did, then, but anyways. Yeah. <laughs> did you guys, did you compete? Did you do any of those cheer competitions? Did your team do that sort of stuff? No. No, I so, saw some of the people on my team. I was at Oregon State, and we didn't, we didn't have a competitive team. Um, if you're talking, I think you're talking about like all star kind of stuff where they like do national cheer competitions. Yeah. Those people right. are incredibly talented, crazy strong, and they're all really injured. Like all of the guys who've been doing that for a long time, throwing girls for a long time, they all had like broken backs, fucked up hips, shoulders, no kidding. just like mangled. Yeah, because you know, it's. Girls squirm around, weights don't. They're they're uh, they're harder to lift. Yeah. And you know, yeah, right. when things go wrong, like, you know, you're gonna sacrifice yourself to catch a girl when you're doing some crazy stunts and like um yeah, so like, everybody who, who stayed in that sport long term was just mangled. Um they, they did some really cool shit for sure. Some of my friends were were quite good at the sport, but I never I probably spent six, eight months in total doing it. Um, right. and then like I was saying, my buddy on the team, he would, he was like, you should do a show. And then, you know, I dropped out of the team cause I didn't want to be, you know, diet brain and trying to catch girls that seemed kind of, uh, <laughs> dangerous to me. Um, <laughs> and then, you know, I did my first show and you know, the rest is kind of history. Um, I, I don't what think was, I've what was it about the show that, then. uh, what was it about the competing that really grabbed you? I mean, I know obviously just from knowing you, you love to train and everything, but I like to challenge people to compete early just to find out if they love bodybuilding, if they love lifting weights, because there's a difference, you know? Yeah. Uh, what was it for you that like really pulled you in and you were like, no, this is what I want to do? Um, it wasn't like, it, it wasn't necessarily being up on stage. Like, you know, that's, that's the final thing that you get to do. I really did. Like when you get into that, like, you know, six, seven week out mark where you're really starting to get depleted and you're like, you're feeling it and you know, you feel depleted and tired and stuff. I really start to, I wouldn't say thrive, but like, I feel like I'm achieving something when I get to that point. And I just kind of mm -hmm. got hooked on like, you know, pushing hard, um, I mean, I was, I was, don't get me wrong. I was 
far from perfect in that diet. <laughs> like I was cheating on my diet a lot <laughs> in that first prep because I was living in my fraternity house and they had like a, a kitchen with like an unlimited cereal bar down there. And I was, I was weak of mind. I, I have to confess uh, I had a lot of cereal, but yeah, I mean, when I, when I started to like get down into that, like, you know, last little bit there where you really dig in and, you know, the training sessions kind of suck, but on the other hand, you're like, you know, you're making progress and getting really lean. I, I mean, I'm sure you guys understand, like it's, it, it gets addicting, like reaching that level of conditioning. Um, of course. And yeah, so I think uh, that's what kind of hooked me. And I, that said, like I haven't spent a lot of my time as a bodybuilder in prep. Like I, I spent, so I did my first show in 17. My second show was in 19. So I took a, a long break between that because I knew I needed to put on a ton of tissue. Uh, and then right. I did my next show after 19 and 21. So I've taken long breaks between all my shows. Um, I think my, this is probably my shortest one between the USA's and New York. It's like nine months. That's it. So, um, but yeah, I, I mean, I've, heaviest I ever got natural was probably like 200, 202 pounds. Um, and I'm like mm -hmm. five foot eight, so I'm not, I'm not super tall, but like, I, I guess you could call me a hard gainer. I hate that term. Cause that's just, you know, what people throw out when they don't know how to eat, but like, I really do have to force feed myself a lot in order to grow. Um, and you know, spending an extended period of time in the off season with like an elevated body weight and, you know, making sure it sticks, uh, when you get up mm -hmm. there, and you get stronger at that body weight, kind of refine it there. Um, that's where I got to spend a lot of my time personally. Um, right. Because, you know, otherwise it just kind of falls off me. I got a, I got a skinny white kid metabolism from my dad. <laughs> so um, that's, that's kind of the tough part for me. Getting in shape is usually pretty smooth. Like this prep has been pretty easy, honestly, uh, getting mm -hmm. in shape for this. So, who who would yeah, you say would be? Oh, Go ahead. Ron. I was just gonna say. I was just gonna say. Uh, who who do you who do you think would be your number one influences when you know when you when you look at your physique and where you want to take your physique, you know where who who are you kind of looking towards? Um, you know, as like man, you know, I'd love to be able to do you know something like what this guy did or what that guy did. You know, are you are you looking at any of the of the big champions through history, or are you you not really doing like you're not really thinking about that stuff? Or, well, I mean, I I try to, you know, it's 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 a dangerous habit to like compare yourself to really good competitors because like you start to believe that maybe you could beat them, and you probably can't. So I got to keep myself in my own lane. Uh, but I mean, as far as like people I'm fans of. Honestly, it's like it's people like you guys and like you and Dusty. Um, I know I'm not just kissing your ass. Like it's it's guys that are like they don't have all of the shape and the structure and the beautiful muscle bellies and all that stuff. They have to win on muscularity and conditioning, and because those are the hard things that a lot of people that are genetically gifted, you know, they're they're so good that they can kind of cut corners. Mm -hmm. and get away with it and still mm -hmm. win shows. I don't, I don't like that mentality. So as far as people who I look up to and follow and try and emulate, as far as the process of bodybuilding, it's, it's mm -hmm. like the workhorse people like, uh, uh, Jordan Peters comes to mind too. Um, is mm -hmm. another guy who's just like, you know, really was not cut out to be a, like a super heavyweight bodybuilder, but he fucking forced it, you know? And I, I admire that a lot. <laughs> um, and you know, even though I do have some of those like gifts as far as like shape and structure and stuff, I, I know it's not the right way to go about things to like rely on that. Cause I know I could probably get away with shit. Um, you know, maybe not show up in the best condition or maybe not put a hundred percent into a prep or an off season, but like, it's just, it's just not a good mindset to be in. So, you know, I, 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 I like to follow and emulate the workhorse kind of guys more than anything. Keep, keep the mentality, you know, uh, in that, in that real blue collar zone and, and not, not get yeah. comfortable with any of the, 
the gifts you might have going for you. Yeah. And body build, like, like you were shaped like a fridge. (laughs) <laughs> because it'll get you further than if you don't. <laughs> oh, sorry. I was just yeah, waving. I, I, thought, mind, yeah. I thought you were talking directly. I was like, oh, hi. I was, um, like, <laughs> I was like, Dustin's got something to say. Nope, that was it. I yeah, was just waving. Like, you know, we all know competitors who are like, I mean, you don't, people don't talk about it, but like pros cheat on their diets all the time. And mm-hmm. they get away with it because they have gifts that, most people don't. Um, some names come to mind that I will not, you know, voice, but I, I know for a fact that they, they're cutting corners and they could be winning shows and maybe Olympias if they weren't, you know, fucking around. Um, right. But I, I don't want to be that guy. Um, so, I, you know, that's those are those people who I look up to. I think what's cool about the way that you present yourself and it's the way you are, but obviously for people online is, you know, you, you kind of, you actually say like you're a mediocre bodybuilder and we all know that that's not the case. And so do you, but it's a good mindset to stay in because that will allow you to become what you can. Cause, cause you're absolutely right. There are guys that are leaving it on the table who could have careers that, you know, I mean, like hall of fame careers. And at the end of the day, it's leaving that rep or two or that, that two minutes of cardio that no one knows about at the end of the day you do. But I, I love that you keep that mentality because I always laugh. Like I love, you know, watching your, your page and stuff. Cause I'm like, you, you, you have the tools, but your strongest tool is that mindset. And then that's Mm. the part you don't want to lose because when you're coming up against, I used to always say, you know, if you, if you've got great genetics, flawless genetics, you get flex wheeler. If you have almost flawless genetics and an insane mindset, you get Ronnie Coleman. Who's the best of all time? Yeah. The difference was the mindset. You know, I think if flex wheeler had Ronnie's mindset, Ronnie wouldn't have eight Olympias. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Sorry, Stu, I cut you off there. Yeah, I, I totally agree. I mean, I uh, I don't know. I I never really because I, I started competing six years ago. Now I didn't really think I'd get to this point necessarily. Huh. I kind of knew that I was going to get to this level muscularity wise, maybe, but I didn't know mm-hmm. that. Like you know, if you look at pictures from my first show, I didn't look like I was going to be a pro bodybuilder. You know, I looked right. like a muscular kid, not a not like a. They didn't have shape or flow or anything, but I mean, the, you don't know until you do it, right? Oh, so, I, had you, I had you lined up. There we go. Oh God! Oh, you uh, have it. <laughs> That's awesome. I think it was nineteen, bro. I think it was nineteen. There, yeah. Natty it's not bad at all. That's not bad at all, man. That's a great foundation. That's the thing, though, that people should look at because we get this, and I know Stu, you coach as well. I always get irritated when someone asks me very early on if they have what it takes to be a pro Hmm. because no one was walking up to you in the gym and saying, this is your career. And Hmm. now it can be because you just like, and not that you went for becoming a, the, you know, a a hall of fame bodybuilder or anything, but you went after training and bodybuilding and this is what came of it, you know? And I think that's the part that, that I enjoy is, um, watching people who love to train and love to bodybuild and just watching what that evolution does. Now you're at a place where it's like, okay, you can't deny what you have. And if you can keep that mindset, who knows where it can go? You know, like you said, now, now, now the biggest thing for you, the hardest part is going to be letting people know who you are off the stage so that that, Mm -hmm. uh, so you can make that financial move and slide out of, a career and into this as a career, you know, cause that's, yeah. that's the, 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 the magic. The I'll be the first, I'll be the first one to admit I suck at like the whole social media thing. I'm trying to post shit regularly. I think I've done a decent job at the last few months, but I mean, I just, most of the time I'm just like going to work and going to the gym and my life is boring and that's, there's nothing wrong with that, but like nobody really <laughs> wants to watch, or at least I don't think anybody wants to watch because it's just kind of mundane to me. Um, I, I think, but yeah, I mean, like, like you live a lifestyle. It's not that, 
weird, you know? It's like, what mm-hmm. the fuck would I make a YouTube video about cooking my beef or whatever, you know? Right. I, uh, I was going to ask you, I was going to ask you, you know, there's been a lot of trends. I've, I've been around a long time. I've seen a lot of trends, you know, people copying this champion and this and, you know, that champion. And, you know, a lot of guys were shaving the sides of their head and growing the top long when Jay was a champ. And then you know, Bumstead comes in with the mustache. And, you know, now you Mold. go, you and Eduardo Carac with, <laughs> with the, the big hair. And I'm just wondering if you're prepared to see you know, a, a couple thousand kids at your next expo with growing their hair nice and big like beef stew, you know, oh, 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 so. how do you, yeah, you know, how do you feel about this? Everyone's, everyone's uh, loving it. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm glad people like it because my mom likes it and that's the most important thing. Uh, but she, she doesn't like me there it is. hair. So <laughs> I, I got to keep it for her and, um, you know, if everyone else likes it, you know, whatever. But I, on, I, I kind of did it as a joke because, um, I mean, let's be honest. Like most people who do this sport, they fucking lose their hair, right? Because of what yeah. we do. Yeah. And, uh, I like. I'm really lucky. Both my grandparents, uh, you know, both my uh, my grandfathers and my grandmothers, they they had all their hair. Um, and I, I think my grandpa is 101 now. Still got a full head of hair. It's Dang. all white, but like, still kicking it. 101, yeah. huh? Yeah. Oh so wow! You got your hair. You probably got a great liver and everything. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got my blood done a couple weeks ago. The shit was actually pretty, pretty good. <laughs> like I uh, see. Now you know, we're like talking genetics, dude. Out. This is where we really come in. Yeah, this is <laughs> genetics. Yeah, I, I can take some abuse, I guess. But uh, yeah, I'm I'm really lucky. Like I, I'm, I figure I'm gonna rock it while I have it. And, if it goes, then it goes, and maybe I'll go to Turkey and get the transplant thing or whatever. But um, <laughs> yeah, I'm in, I'm enjoying it right now. It's it's a pain in the ass, definitely. Like I, I it gets down in my eyes and stuff. I don't really know what to do with it most of the time. But yeah, <laughs> yeah. Is there a regimen? Is there a regimen for that hair? What do you got to do? Yeah, don't get a haircut for nine months. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> That's about it. <laughs> I like your There's style. Secret product. <laughs> I, I think I see a hair care product. I see you need a yeah. you need a twenty percent discount for a hair care product, or you just his own product. Yeah, it's just your own product. Yeah, his own shoulders, product. Baby. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. There you go. I'd love to talk know, a little bit more about. Up. I'd love to talk a little bit more about training. Um, you know, we didn't get a chance to um, on blood, sweat, and gear. We we did. Oh. I, I did mention, uh, or we did talk a little bit about the fact that. You know, you you had been more heavy progressive overload in the past. You tried more volume and then you went back to heavy progressive overload. And, you know, you had mentioned on the show that that's really what you found had works worked best for you. And you've made a ton of progress in what you said was your shortest off season yet. Can you tell us a little bit about what your training has looked like, you know, during that growth phase and then into the prep? Yeah. So, I mean... I had the, like I said earlier, I had this nine month block between the shows. So I, I had a, I, I always have pretty good rebounds after, after competitions. Uh, so like I went from like 250 up to like 280 in pretty short order, like lean. Um, and then that was kind of my starting off point for my off season. Um, and I kept on for as long as I was physically able to, I kept on deadlifting. Um, you know, until your gut gets big enough where you just can't get down to the bar. Um, so that was, that was a good first, you know, half of my off season. I I was able to keep deadlifts in and keep those, keep those progressing. Um, but recently, um, for the last year, year and a half, my bread and butter movement for like, for leg stuff has been, um, the pendulum squat that like, that's the, 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 the Atlantis one at, uh, yeah muscle factory i i think you you're the one who got that pendulum squat right dusty oh yeah had to <laughs> yeah it's it's butter i love that thing and you know i i had a look like a little adductor injury that i was dealing with forever and like that was the only movement i could just hammer away on huh. um real heavy and um you know not bother that that little injury so um that's that's been my bread and butter for a little while now um i kind of 
as far as like stuff that I was trying to bring up, I did do a little bit of extra volume on my arm days or well, I, I do like a push pull setup. So like, you know, I'll, I was doing a little more volume on my arms on those push and pull days because okay. um, mm-hmm. I need to work on those. Um, and when you're, you're eating a ton of food and, you know, full blown in the off season, you're able to recover from that extra work and make some progress oh, yeah. there. I've, I've honestly in the past just been lazy with my arm training because it, it doesn't really excite me. I'm sure you guys are mm-hmm. kind of on the same page. It's just like, let's do yes. some bicep drills or whatever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm not getting right. hyped up for that. Um, but I need to work on them, so I, I made some changes there. Um, I've also, um, my back, like the the thickness in between my, uh, what are they called? My scapula, uh, like my rhomboids wow. and stuff. I really need to work on that. And I, I have a little bit of a bummy shoulder, so like, I had to, I've been really hammering away at, uh, I'm trying to get strong on chest supported like T-bar rows and stuff. Yeah. I've been starting off my thickness sessions with those. Um, and I've, I've made some good progression in weight and also just like the ability to like focus and contract on those muscles. Um, mm-hmm. I've improved that a lot. Um, and I think that's contributed to some growth there. I still need to work on like my Terry's a lot, like right under your armpits. Um, I don't really have a lot of pop there. Um, but that's, you know, problem for next year, I guess. So, okay. So take, um, take your, your, we'll say the chest supported row. How many sets Mm -hmm. of that are you doing? How does that look? And then, and then same question for the, uh, the, uh, pendulum squat. (laughs) Yeah, I, I'm I'm a two set guy okay. on everything pretty much. Um, on my leg on my leg work, I haven't dropped my rep ranges under ten in a very long time though, and I think that's done a lot to uh, you know for one save my knees and joints because I mean I, I, I've I've loaded up that that pendulum as heavy as it'll go. Uh, I'm getting mm-hmm. like 10, 12 reps on there, so. Um, you can't just keep on adding weight to it. You just hurt yourself. Right. But also, you know, I'll do sets up to like 20, 20 plus sometimes on the pendulum Hmm. and, you know, not, not quite like Widowmakers like, like in DC, but, um, you know, real gut buster sets. And I think those are like really, really effective for, for quads in particular. Um, cause I, I used to be, you know, you know, sets of five on barbell squats back in the day years ago i i I was squatting big weights uh with good form and stuff but like it just wasn't translating to like Hmm. sweep on my quads or anything um so i think you know just shifting the whole rep range up and just pumping the shit out of them with blood uh with those Mm -hmm. higher rep sets has, has helped me a lot you know it's not just a pump set right i'm I'm still taking that set of 20 to failure yeah, um, but it's. Uh, I think that's it's been very effective for me recently. We, and you, we talked about this last episode. We talked about uh, how hard a twenty rep set. You know, like some people think you should just be able to do twenty reps, but Dusty and and Scott and I were saying, like, if you're going to do a twenty rep work set on something like pendulum, you sort of want to like. Are you thinking like I got to be able to get at least twelve without stopping, and then I'll grind out the rest? Is that sort of the mentality you're thinking of going into yeah. that set? Yeah, and you know because I say I do like a first set with seven plates on there, and I'll back off to five for like a set of like eighteen or twenty or whatever. Like that second set, I'll grab a spot on there, and like I'll just tell them, "Do not let me rack this until you know I pop, you know, until I like get squished by it." Um, because like you, you're, your, your brain's telling you to stop the whole time and you just, you can't, <laughs> you know, you're not really mm-hmm. sure if you can get another rep when you get up that high, you don't know if your, your lungs are going to fail, if your bracing's going to fail or mm-hmm. if your quads are going to fail. So you just go, I mean, that's, that's all you can really do. And hopefully have somebody there to save you when, when you go, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, it is, so it is scary. Doing- it's, it's very painful too. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So you're doing push pull legs and then day off. Yeah, so I do a push pull legs rest and then a push pull uh, on that second pull day. That's when I do my deadlifts and my thickness stuff. Hmm. Uh, and I'll also uh-huh. do some. 
I was talking to Tommy about this actually, uh, Styles. Um, I, I know that you guys used to get your shit programmed by JP, and he had like a density day in there uh-huh. Um, uh-huh. where you know you're doing your hip hinge and some some back work and some leg leg touch up work. Uh, and I've been doing yeah. that midweek, like three or four days after my main leg day. So I'll do like hand mm. curls and leg extensions after I do my deadlifts and my, my back work. Right. And it's a long session for sure. It's a lot to recover from. I need a rest day the next day. But um, I think it's it's been really productive for keeping my legs fuller. Um, and right. just give them, a, you know, not a full extra leg day, but just a little bit of extra work in the, in the middle of the week to, to get some blood in there, um, when, when you got the chance. So, so how many, how many total sets, how many total sets for the whole week would you do for like, uh, say quads, uh, like working sets, if you're thinking of the two big sets, probably he's at four on my four, four sets on my men leg day. And then two on my touch up day. Hmm. So like mm-hmm. really quite low. And I think I could probably start yeah. working that upwards from where it is now. Uh, in the past, I've done like two sets of squat movement and then a, two sets of leg press. And then um, I'll finish up with leg extensions with something, you know, wacky on there. But, um, you know, as you get deeper into a deficit, you can't really recover from all of that work. So, um I've also found that like when I was really heavy, like north of 290, my recovery capability from leg work was actually worse than it was when I was lighter, like 260, 270. Was, I, I don't know if it was because it was really strong or, or what, but like I was just, I, I don't know. I, I would be sore for like a week straight after doing just like four set the quads. Um, I was, it was, I felt like a total pussy. I didn't know what was going on, like why I couldn't recover from it. But I don't know. <laughs> I think what's good to note and just trying to re- remind the viewers here is two things. You would have to see what these four sets look like to understand why that's enough. Yeah. Cause that's an area that, that yeah. gets missed a ton. Like if I were to just take Stu's program and send it to a, uh, you know, a, a relative new lifter or even middle of the game, it's not enough. They wouldn't get anything um, out of four sets, you know? No, nothing like, because they don't understand. Minutes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, they don't understand what was left on the table. Um, but the other big thing is, everyone wants the answer from the internet, from Instagram. What do you do? Where are your feet? What are you doing with this? And I think you got to listen to what Stu was just pointing out, which is during this time period, I realized I had to bring that down to four sets. But now after this show, when I'm in that sweet spot, I'm going to bring it up and it's listening to your body. Cause I think oftentimes, and I know I was guilty of this in times in my career, you wrote the program and you stuck to the program. Like it was your life. Hmm. This is what the sheet says. I'm not going to be a bitch. I'm going to do this. But if your body is telling you I'm not recovering, then you're hurting yourself by not using your brain and backing off. Or like you said, Stu, in reverse going, all right, I'm going to, I'm going to sweet spot of the perfection at 270. Let's see what happens when I add that extra set, you know, it's just listening to your body. Yeah. It's, it's a feedback thing. And this is something that uh, I was, I watched JP for a long time. I was on his forum for a while, watch his videos and shit, but like he's all about, he used the term auto regulation, which is a fancy way of saying, listen to your body, dumbass, where, you know, you know, if you feel fucked, then take an extra rest day or, you know, maybe cut a set out. Or if you're getting really weak on one of your movements, then maybe you need to trim off some of the extra junk volume that you might be doing at the end of your session. Cause you know, like in a, in a prep setting. Um, mm-hmm. And it's, it's hard to know to do that until, you've been training for enough years and you kind of understand like, okay, this is where I'm at in my diet. These are the drugs that are in play. This is what I'm usually able to recover from after, you know, this experience with previous preps. This is what I expect to be at strength wise or whatever. And it just takes a long time to kind of get a sense of that. But once I've kind of gotten to that point, uh, like last year, I think I managed the like training fatigue and everything pretty well in prep. And I, I didn't kind of overdo it. 
Uh, I've been doing a mm. good job this year as well. Like I've, I probably maintained 85% of my strength, nice. which, you know, that, that's up until like, you know, a week and a half out, um, which, you know, like my last real training sessions were last week already, but I'm just doing fluff, fluffy stuff at this point. But I, I think um, knowing when to push uh, and when to back off both in the gym and also like diet wise, um, you know, that's, it's, it's something that you need to learn and you need to be on the same page with, with your, with your coach. Um, if you have one and, you know, just an experienced thing. I agree. For sure. What What are some of the things that that you you said you tried high volume training for a while, higher volume training? What were some of the issues you had with it, and what was some of the feedback that your body was giving you that made you go back to this progressive style? Well, I did. So I wouldn't say I, I was doing high volume. I was doing more instead of like a push pull setup. I, like my first push day would be almost entirely chest stuff. So I wasn't doing mm-hmm. extra lateral delt work. It was it was all just chest and, and a bit of triceps. And like I would get out of that session and just my, my chest would be sore for like three, four, five days. Mm-hmm. And you know, it's it's ready to go when I hit it again next week. But you know, I got another pressing day in there where I've got I gotta do all a bunch of shoulder pressing movements. Um, mm-hmm. so if I'm hammering away at myself, you know, with a, a semi recovered pack and I'm doing like a high incline Smith, you know, you're using a bit of your upper pec there and your triceps and everything. It's all kind of the same movement pattern. It just, I just wasn't able to recover from like the, the more intense, but less frequent sessions. So for me personally, mm-hmm. I found that, you know, it's same with that density day thing that I was talking about. Um, you're doing a little touch up work for your hands and, and quads um extra like twice a week frequency has been pretty effective for me um i think that's like kind of my sweet spot i think going forward because i still need to like bring up my arms a bit you know because in everybody in the ifbb has like 23 inch arms it's insane (laughs) so i i need to i think i'll probably need to do like an arm day uh going into next off season um or figure out some way to, to get some extra workload on that. Uh, but I mean, yeah, generally like I was, I was telling Andrew, I was telling the blood, sweat and gear guys, this like, don't fix it if it ain't broken. I mean, I've been training with this split for the better part of, I mean, two or three years now. So I put on a lot of tissue in that time frame. So don't, don't fuck with something that works. So, yeah. Do you find you have that conversation with, with some bodybuilders who, um, you know, I'm sure you get a lot of, you know, young guys younger than you, uh, asking you what to do. And do, do you, do you have that conversation where, you know, it, uh, people are so sort of, uh, used to the, the mainstream training stuff that when you say like, uh, I did four working sets for quads, they're like, what? Like, do you, do you, yeah. do you still run into like, they just don't get that, those numbers. They just don't make sense to them. Yeah. And, you know, I try to explain to them all of the variables that I'm taking into consideration when I set up my shit. Right. So like I'm telling them, like, they ask me, like, how do you set up your split? And I'm like, well, this is what works for me, but I understand what I can recover from. Do you understand what you can recover from? Like, you know, all of Mm -hmm. these variables that you need to take into account when you're setting up your, your training volume and your frequency. And, um, you know, that, that, when people ask me questions, I try to get them thinking for themselves rather than just being like, do this you know? Cause it's, um, and I try to do that with my clients too, that I've been working with. Like some of them, uh, I've set up their training program, like a hundred percent other ones. I've been like, you know, you got, you really need to be talking to me and telling me like, Hey, you know, how are you feeling? Are you progressing in these movements? Uh, I have been trying to shift a lot of them towards a lower volume approach. Cause I think that works really well. Uh, especially for you know, mm-hmm. kind of like beginner intermediate types, they just need to get strong on the basic. Um, yeah, but yeah, I mean, get them thinking uh, in terms of like biofeedback and you know how you're feeling and are you getting stronger? Because that's when you can actually communicate that intelligently with the person that you're working with. Like you, your ability to like manipulate things just goes through the roof. Because uh, if you don't understand it, you're kind of like just pissing in the wind. 
So, yeah, it's really hard when you when you first get started with people because, for example, you know, one thing to touch on with with people with recovery is you might have a trouble recovering because your body just hasn't got used to working this hard. So it doesn't mean early yeah. into your work with someone, it's time to back off. It might just mean your body has to adapt to this level of intensity. And then down the line, we can look and say, okay, no, we do need to back off or we need to add more, you know? Um, and that's where, like you said, Stu, the, the conversation, uh, I've got a few clients right now that I'm really fortunate are starting to understand it. Just tell me everything they think. I'm like, mm -hmm. this is what I do. Throw it on the email. It's fine. You know what I mean? And yeah, sometimes we're like, yeah, well, you're just, you're, you're, you're just not there yet, but don't worry. And then after, as they start getting stronger, because they're starting to progress more and more, then I'm starting to realize, okay, now we really are training hard. So if you're still having trouble recovering, it might be time for us to, to pull that back a hair, you know? Um, yeah. So I think that that's an, an important I, I, part of the I process too. I experienced that. I, I did a little chunk back. Uh, this is like right after the gyms opened up in 2020 uh, during the pandemic mm -hmm. bullshit. I was like skinny fat, you know, I wanted to get, put some tissue back on quickly. So I did DC training for a little bit um, and I set it mm -hmm. up. So I was hitting everything. I was training four days a week instead of three, which is probably a bit much, mm -hmm. but like, dude, I could, I was fed up from just, you know, the two sets of quads and or I thought, what was it like one or two of everything with the yeah. rest pause in there. Mm -hmm. Like I, I'd never done that before I, the, the rest pause set up and it worked great. It, like it put a lot of tissue back on me pretty quickly. Um, but I, like I was, I, I was for, for a few weeks when I first started it cause I wasn't used to that kind of frequency and intensity. And, uh, it works though. If you stick with it, um, right. I, I really like the program. Oh, the gallon of water, real bodybuilder. <laughs> yeah. I'm uh until it's peak it's week, I got the lines. Uh, no, it's Arizona. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you go. Nice. What, what are the lines of those times a day? Like you got to be down to here by 10 a.m. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah so yeah. it's Monday now. Uh, so, I mean, the way Blue has me, we've done this a couple of times now. Um, my coach Blue, the way he has me peaking, we kind of like taper my water down over the course of a few days. Uh, and I gradually get lighter from that as my um, my carbs start going up. Uh, in the last few days of the week, um, and I kind of get drier and fuller over the course of a few days, um, and then I get wild and might take like a quarter tab of dyes I had the day before. <laughs> um, uh, but he's, you know, he, <laughs> Blue really doesn't like <laughs> Blue doesn't like using a lot of diuretics on people um, because you know they're kind of unpredictable. Uh, and mm -hmm. generally speaking, if you're in shape and you can manipulate water properly. Uh, you don't need to do all that much. I'm also kind of lucky because like my body, like you got to load me really hard over the course of like multiple days. So, uh -huh. I mean, the, the downside of that is like you could potentially distend your stomach from eating a lot. Uh -huh. But if you can avoid that, then like I'm basically impossible to spill. I've never, <laughs> like I've, I've really eaten hard going into shows and, I haven't really overdone it. So what's the craziest thing nice. you've ever eaten loading into a show? Uh, the craziest, probably the, my first show, my, my buddy from the cheer team, he was, he was like the only guy I knew who knew anything about bodybuilding. Yeah. And he had me eating, uh, I think it was baked yams with cinnamon on them, which were delicious and rice cakes <laughs> and Nutella. And uh, I was just like buzz sawing those backstage. Uh, it's like they're delicious, you know. Yeah, so, uh, yeah. That, that was probably the craziest thing. I mean, Blue is pretty straightforward. He's 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 all like rice, potatoes, fish, a uh, bit of steak. Yeah. Same food you ate. Yeah, yeah. Same stuff that just runs through your stomach just fine. Yeah, um, and yeah, you know, just ramp it up, eat more of it. Uh, maybe throwing mm. he's going to have me throwing a little bit of fattier stuff this year like it last year because i got a pretty quick metabolism and if i'm just eating fish and rice going into it it just kind of goes right through me so having a little bit of steak and potato in there uh to slow things down a bit i think it's going to help this year uh we've, we've played around with it a bit uh the weeks leading in and 
like it, it gives it gives me like a bit of a fuller look than just fish mm-hmm. uh, and rice uh, in large quantities. So I'm 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 feeling really good going to the show right now. I'm, I woke up looking pretty good this morning. It's like two fifty three. Um, you know, we kind of made a lot of the ke- last kind of chemical manipulations in the last few days and things are just kind of gradually coming together. You know, uh, I think the body fat's been off of me for like a, a week now. So I've just kind of been cruising as far as like the diet goes, cardio's down, training's easy, fatigue is low now. And it's just kind of like landing the plane. So nice. When do you uh, take off? Uh, 6.30 Wednesday. So okay. it's, it'll be like an all-day travel day. I think I'm just going to do hit some arms over at Bev's when I land on Wednesday evening. Mm-hmm. And I got a buddy I'm staying with over there in, uh, in New York, a friend of mine. So I should be able to set up shop there and just kind of have a base. What What's the first right. pro show you ever attended? Like uh, Tampa. Did you go see an Olympia Tampa. Oh, what year? Yeah. Last year when I competed in it. So the, you were never you never went to a pro show before you competed in a pro no. show. I'd never been to a national show before the USA's last year either. It was it was a very <laughs> weird experience. It was it was like such an overwhelming weekend. It was so much fun because you know I'm, I've been a fan for so long. I mean, I've seen all these like who's who of bodybuilding at the USA's, and then I'm in Tampa, and there's like everyone else there. You know, um, I remember seeing Nick Walker in person, and he was like over 300 pounds at the time. And I'd never seen anybody that thick front to back. It was like my right. <laughs> Um And, you know, just being backstage with all these pros, it was, it was so crazy. Cause I mean, you know, as far as I'm concerned, I'm like, I'm still an amateur as of a week ago. You know, I'm just, I'm a fan looking at all these freaks. I'm like, man, this is, this is, uh, I'm in over my head right now, but this is really cool. <laughs> <laughs> I think Scott's going to pull Scott, up your yeah, got a bunch of pictures so everybody can, an understanding of what over the head looks like in Stu's mind. So this is five is, days <laughs> out at uh, two fifty three point one, huh? Yeah, this morning. Nice. Yeah, that's pulling Damn. out. That's looking good. It doesn't look like you have any water to pull. It just looks like you're kind of ready. Yeah, I got I got like this this little bit on the top of my glute and like right in my lower back in that little crevice there. And then once that's out, you know, with the tapering thing I was talking about earlier, I'm not worried about that coming off of me. Here's um, a back shot. Yeah, see, like that's not that's not as hard as I want it to be quite yet. Uh, just right, like the top right. Of my glute there. Your back um, detail has come in so much stronger now than even like the last pictures I saw from whatever that was a couple of weeks ago or a week ago. It's like showing so much more yeah. detail now. That's just like the last and little bit, again, like it is for a lot of guys. Yeah, yeah, it's looking good. Once, once again, I we we try to pound this into people's heads. You know, I I still hear people say like, "Oh, you know, I'm ready. I just got some water to drop," and. Um, you know, I say, well, are your glutes striated all the way across your butt cheek in the morning? And if they say no, and I'm like, well, then you still have body fat. Like yeah. getting the yeah. fat off is the number one most important job. And probably the most questions we get about contest prep all have to do with like, how do I peak properly? And and I think, I mean, you know, once again, looking at photos of you, I mean, you're essentially ready. Like there's some tinkering that you're going to do, yeah. you know, but but like – you know, the, the fat is gone. Like every muscle is striated. The glutes are striated, you know? Um, and mm-hmm. until you're at that point, um, you, it's just dieting, you know, there's no, no uh, people worrying about all this stuff they can do at the end when, you know, they should have, you know, done the work the weeks before the show. So, yeah. And, and there I'm, you are. I'm lucky. Like I, I have a, a pretty, like I said earlier, like I have a pretty quick metabolism. I do like, pretty regular refeeds at the all you can eat sushi places here in nice. town that I know Justy likes. <laughs> um, but like, 
like getting in shape is is not that tough for me. Like I was consistently losing like four, five, six pounds a week until I got down to the two fifties, and then uh, you know just that last little bit takes a few more weeks. But throughout the whole prep, I've kind of been ahead of schedule, and what that allows you to do at the end is like you know the last couple of days of training. I'm not like I'm not like working my ass off in the stairs trying to get the last little bat, bit of fat off. I'm just like I've just been hanging out at home, home being a lazy. You know, doing some pump workouts <laughs> like mm-hmm. just kind of like cruising in dropping the fatigue because like i think that's when you're hammering yourself up into the last second you're gonna look like crap on stage if especially if you're somebody like me who's i kind of have a bit of a i call it like a fragile body where hmm. like if i overdo the dieting or if i overdo training volume or whatever um like it can really like it really negatively affects my look and like Saturday morning, uh, I was probably still training a little bit too hard last week. Uh, and I, I was waking up heavier and like inflamed. I was holding on to a lot more water a couple days ago. Uh, and I took a rest day Saturday. I did some fluffy leg shit yesterday morning. And like this morning I woke up, I think it was like four pounds lighter. Um, yeah, a little fuller than I was like Saturday morning. So I I just need to like back off. Just chill out, eat a little bit more the last couple of days. Um, and, you know, stress wise, physically and mentally, I'm feeling really good right now. Um, I'm not, I'm lucky again, like, I'm not really a, a head case when it comes to the shows. Like, I don't freak out, like, get, let the pressure get to me. I mean, I, I still kind of see this as a hobby. And, you know, mm-hmm. I, the idea that I could win money at the show is cool, but like not something I'm really worried about. You know, it's not paying my bills, right. fortunately. So uh, th- there's not a lot of pressure on me and, you know, because I, I, I try to keep the standards really low for myself. So if I exceed them, then it's a win. <laughs> <laughs> this is great life advice. Set the bar low. Yeah, this is say, yeah. Don't expect <laughs> too much. <laughs> What, exactly. <laughs> what do you do? Everyone's everyone's got their thing that helps them through prep. Some guys binge TV shows. Other people are shopaholics. Some guys like Dusty might accidentally buy like a motorcycle or something while they're prepping. Um, but uh, do you have? <laughs> oh, any, I got a good one. Do you I have anything? Okay. Okay. Let's hear it. Let me let me find the picture. Actually. I bought a car. I you know, I know his most recent one. I know his most recent you, one. You've seen it, Dusty, right? <laughs> yes. Uh, where is it? He, he's taking it yeah. right out of my book. It's a page right out of my book. Can you see that? It's uh, oh, E63 yeah. AMG. Not the most reliable oh, vehicle nice. in the world, uh, but it's really fast <laughs> and I I really like it. So nice. I've, I've been looking at a car for a while now, and I was I just piled up some cash, and I was like, I knew I had to do it eventually. And I was torn between: do I get another boring Lexus like I have now, or do I get something stupid and fun like a German car? You know, <laughs> and I I knew I wouldn't have the balls to go and get the AMG if I was like three weeks post show. You know, so I just pulled the <laughs> right. I like so, how you're twisting uh, that though. You you said you wouldn't have the balls, aka you would have way too much sense yeah. if you waited until yes. after the show. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Hey, I don't regret yeah, any so of my empty. bad decisions. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I need yeah, to go so win the show now to make my money back. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> A little motivation. You got to act outside your own best interest once in a while just to motivate yourself. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, yeah but I, I always laugh I, when I don't know. I don't, I don't really spend money on nothing uh, for the most part. It's just right. like bodybuilding is expensive kind of enough. All. You know, food. Exactly. You yeah. probably, your Besides food bill that, is you know, probably huge, man. You probably you have to eat so much, I'm sure, especially in the off season. But, you got to have a savings yeah, account man. just for that alone. Yeah. I, I go to the restaurant store, actually. It's a good deal. Oh, you know, nice. Bulk quantities. But, uh, yeah, like, oh, you- I don't know. I don't spend money on much, and I figured, what the hell? should finally do something. So, you won't but, yeah, that's, well, that's my COVID mechanism, I guess. That was my impulse <laughs> buy. What, what, 
Was it a true prep purchase? Like, did you buy it online by clicking? Because that's that's really next level if you buy a car online. <laughs> no, I, I bought it from a, a, a nice Bosnian gentleman who was having a child and uh, had to get rid of his baby. He'd taken really good care of it. So it's, you know, it's got all the major maintenance stuff done to it. It's not like a time bomb, you know. So right. it wasn't super stupid, but I'm still getting like 12 miles to the gallon. <laughs> <laughs> so... <laughs> did you um you you found okay. that pretty quick though because I, I saw you put the post up about it like does anyone know uh yeah. you know you were looking for i mean you're really specifically looking for that car and man i you know with the way social media works i don't i only see about a third of everyone's posts i feel like anymore right. um but then next thing i know i saw the back of the car and i'm like man it feels like it was only like a week <laughs> ago or two weeks ago that he was looking so mission accomplished i've been eyeing him for like I had been eyeing those things for like probably six months at that point. Um, right. And I, you know, I just, like I said, I just finally pulled the trigger. So I don't know. I do a lot of my own <laughs> car work and maintenance stuff. So I should be able to save a little money there, but I think I'll be okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. I love it. So when, when do you take off? When do you, when do you fly out? Wednesday. Uh, Wednesday morning. Wednesday. Yeah. So it'll be a Wednesday full day of morning. travel. I got a, like a connecting flight in Dallas, I think. Um, but yeah, like I said, I'm gonna be staying with one of my buddies over there. He, he'll be able to set up the kitchen and stuff, so I can cook all my shit and just kind of relax. I'll probably be hanging out at Bev's a little bit because I don't know, it's that's where you should probably hang out for the New York Pro, Please right? <laughs> that's yeah, where people yeah. Will be. Gotta go. Yeah, gotta go get some picks. You do your last. What you do your yeah. last session Thursday? Standard stuff. Uh, I think probably Wednesday. I mean, if, if Blue wants me to, Blue is like psychotic with check-ins before shows. He's like, you know, I, I'm eating a meal and then I'm like sending him pictures like an hour later, like every meal every day for the last few days. So mm. um, he's he's psycho with that stuff. And, you know, if he wants me to go to the gym and move some blood around, then I'll go do that. But otherwise, I think Wednesday I'll hit some arms and that'll be about it. Uh, just kind of relax. Okay. Eat. Well, we uh, wish you luck, and we're going to be rooting for you. It's going to be a great show. Uh, like Scott was saying, yeah. there's lots of new guys hitting this one. So, um, you know, seeing you up on stage, at, you said you're 5'9", right? Five, uh, with the hair, five, I'm 5'10", but without it, like 5'8". <laughs> yeah, five, eight. yeah it'd, be, it'd be great to see you up there, 250-plus pounds or whatever you come in at. And, um, and we're, we're looking forward to it, man. And uh, thanks for being on the show. You know, we asked people for an hour, and you gave us more than an hour. I, uh, I, uh, I know you you're guys, a, a, yeah. a busy guy buying not, cars not, online. Not in the next few days, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to kill time the next few days. I appreciate you. You still have me. you still have time for a truck purchase or a motorcycle? Yeah, you're still exactly. plenty of time. Don't, don't, don't get quit me now. More bad decisions. <laughs> <laughs> you're awful. Okay. Is there anything you want to want to say? You want to um, you know, let everybody know where to get a hold of you? Beef Stew on Instagram, obviously. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think you, you could probably post my handle in like the description or whatever, Scott. Yep, um, we will. I am going to be. Um, I haven't been taking on any new uh, training clients uh, recently, just because I, I didn't want to like overdo it during the prep. I wanted to give people the attention they needed. But sure. uh, starting in June, I'm going to start ramping up and. Uh, taking on some more clients so uh, i'll probably be putting a post about that pretty soon but um yeah besides that um i have no sponsors i have uh no obligations i'm a free man for now um so yeah i'm, I'm looking forward to the show and thank you guys for having me absolutely Our pleasure, yeah man. much appreciated man it was really good to meet you Stu. yeah we'll, we'll have to uh meet in person sometime i actually you're in Vancouver, right? Vancouver. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. My, my parents yeah. live in, uh, Washington. So, uh, I mean, I'm thinking about moving up there in the near future actually. So I'll, I'll have to get up to West coast at some point. 
it's not too far. Oh away. yeah, we're just like like an hour over the border. Not even get an that, hour over the border. Get that passport rolling. We were talking about that on the, yes. the last episode. Get that started. It might take a few ah. months. You're gonna he's gonna need it for yeah. some bodybuilding travel too. I foresee that coming in his future oh, very sure. soon. You know. Plus, I I have a I have a feeling that he's he's gonna he's gonna you know be a fan favorite who's gonna have to go overseas to those expos as well. That's what I'm saying. Soon enough. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> there you go. You bet, man. Yeah, okay, fun, thanks. Man. Beep Stu. Stu Sutherland on All It's right. Just Bodybuilding. Thank you, guys. Much appreciated, brother. Us. Thanks again, brother. Yeah, thanks, buddy. Good luck at the show. All right, we all set? Yes, sir. We're good yeah, to go, yeah, Stu. Good, man. I appreciate thanks it, man. Thanks for your time, right, man. Cool, yeah, good luck with the awesome. next few days and, and with travel and all that. We'll be looking forward to seeing how things go. I'll, this is going to go up on Wednesday, so uh, I'll tag you okay. in that. You're not leaving till the evening, you said, right? Morning. Uh, morning. morning. Oh, morning. morning. Day, uh, Never mind. Yeah. yeah, I'll send it to you regardless, <laughs> though, once it's up. Okay. All right. Cool, man. Appreciate Thanks, you man. guys. I'll uh, talk soon, okay? Rock See Tampa. Ya. Or New York, I mean. Rock New See York. Ya. See ya. All right. Hey, Stu Sutherland. It was he's a cool guy. I haven't met him before, so it was good to kind of meet him on the show. Yeah. You know? I was surprised because I think I, I, you must have just missed him when we were out filming um, for the uh, Mutant on a Mission because I saw him in in the gym that day. But I don't know if you he had already he saw the back of my the shirt. Day. He said he saw me walk yeah. out the door or something, and I was like, Fuck, I don't, yes. I, didn't, I didn't realize he was there. <laughs> Yeah, because it was because uh, you he was there and so was uh, Robert Timms. I don't know if you met him or saw him while you were there either. You know what? I just remembered seeing Stu. Oh yeah, I realize now I there didn't. Know. I was so I saw Timms inside and I was like, "Holy shit, that guy's crazy!" And they're like, "That's Timms," and I was like, "You're right." And then I was outside waiting for the Uber, and and I remember seeing Stu go in. He was wearing a pair of jeans, like he wasn't in his clothes yet. Yeah. You know what I mean? He was one of those Parker guys that work. changes yep. at the gym. Uh, and uh, he, he he walked in in a pair of jeans. And I remember, I, I just remember that now because of the hair. I can't believe I didn't put two and two together. <laughs> but I just realized now, I was like, that guy looked jacked. <laughs> the, the people I that go thinking, in with jeans, Ron, th- those are the people who have jobs. See, so yeah. what they're yeah, doing I know. is I had a work. hard time. I didn't understand. Yeah, I, I took like, the what, concept. What, 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 Why is like, jeans on? <laughs> So yeah, did he go to a wedding? Was it church? <laughs> what would, would he possibly put in here at five thirty p.m.? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he has nowhere to change. <laughs> yeah. It's hard to connect this when you've been uh, uh, unemployed for so long, wearing sweats for uh, the better so part of my funny life. That I yeah. just remembered that. I just remembered he was the guy in the jeans. I should yeah. have said that to him. He would have laughed his ass off. Yeah. Okay. The homeless That's guy funny. in the That's jeans. Funny. I wonder where he even got those jeans. I was jeans like, I'm wondering, does this guy not have anywhere to go? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. I thought maybe he's also one of those guys, you know, every gym has one of those guys that just comes in in his jeans and trains. Yeah. Jeans right? and boots oh, or you something, know? you know? Like, yeah, They're like he's on his break. Like he's that. worked for a drywall company <laughs> and he's just like on his break. Yeah. He's in there doing curls. Yeah. They put the work gloves okay. on once in a while too. You ever yeah, see that yeah, look? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. I love that. The I love the gardening gloves. The gardening yeah. gloves in the gym are the best. Oh. I've seen that. Yeah. 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 Hardcore man. Working man. Working man. Okay. Are we going to wrap this one? <laughs> let's let's this do it. Interview yes, episode. Yes. Okay. Thanks everybody. Uh, remember, I am mutant dot com. Twenty percent off. Dusty twenty. Big round twenty. Patreon for Think Big Bodybuilding for the price of a cup of coffee. You can make Scott's dreams come true. Thank you, guys. Yeah. I appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. From coffee Patreon. goes up. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, you bet. I want that Patreon going up, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And we appreciate it. And thanks very much. We had a little bit of a delay, a little bit. I felt like I was yeah. I talked over Dusty a couple of times, but it's all right. I'm sure it turned it out OK. Out. Yeah. Thinking. Yeah. OK. I thanks, saw that, everybody. Too. And remember. Yeah, it's just bodybuilding. There we go.